Welcome everyone to another exciting edition of No DQ and A video right here on NoDQ.com. I am Noah Donish. I bet you were not expecting to see me sitting in this chair. Well, I am proud to make the most epic announcement in the history of this YouTube channel because you know something? Aaron has taken on way too many responsibilities on the website, so he is proud to announce that I am the new host of No DQ I don't and think so, you son of a bitch. Get the hell out of here. Ugh. Ah! Oh my god. Sorry about that, guys. Noah Donish, I guess, decided to try and overstep his bounds by hijacking No DQ and A video. I had to put him in his place. However, if you are a fan of Noah and you want to see him, you can watch The Scoop. If you want to watch Mike Nagel, you can watch NTV. If you want to watch Jeff Meacham, you can watch Talk Wrestling. If you want to watch Wayne Needham, you can watch Ring Scoops on No DQ. All of them are part of the NoDQ.com YouTube network for the low price of just zero dollars. Enough of that. Let's get to your questions here. Packed episode today with a lot of your topics. First one comes from Ziggler is Money. Greetings from Serbia. Do you think Rollins could have a lengthy title reign similar to CM Punk's? If not, maybe at least eight months. Well, I am expecting Seth Rollins to be WWE Champion until at least SummerSlam. I'm figuring SummerSlam will be the big Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar match that we've been anticipating for several months now. It makes sense to continue to build up Seth Rollins as a top superstar in WWE and as a credible champion because if he's going up against Brock Lesnar, you want him to be as strong as possible going into that match. Hopefully Seth Rollins can get a few decisive victories as champion. You know, it's one thing to win a match with outside interference, but I, I think it would do a lot of good for Seth Rollins and his character to beat somebody clean. That way he's more credible when the time comes for him to go up against Lesnar. That's just my take on it, but I definitely expect Rollins to be champion at least for the next couple of months. And I got this question from Seth Rollins' guy. Apparently this guy is a Seth Rollins fan. Yo, Aaron, what are your thoughts on a possible feud between Seth Rollins and Triple H? Triple H said he sees the reflection of himself in Rollins and also the fact that Seth Rollins is now using Triple H's finisher and that could lead to a future feud between the pair. I could definitely see this playing out, and it does make sense for there eventually to be a power struggle and for Seth Rollins to get too big of a head, get too much of an ego, and start to try and take over the company by himself. I, I could see this storyline happening. And here's another thing. In the storyline, Stephanie suspended Brock Lesnar. Now, how do you bring Brock Lesnar back into the main storylines? Well, you can have a situation where Seth Rollins is taking over the company and he is out of control and Triple H and Stephanie have no other choice but to beg Paul Heyman to bring back Brock Lesnar and they apologize to him and you can have a Triple H face turn at that point. And uh, you can do, maybe you can even do Triple H versus Seth Rollins like at Battleground and have Seth Rollins beat Triple H clean. You know, I mentioned that earlier. You know, that would really put over Seth Rollins as a, a real legitimate force. And after losing to Seth Rollins, Triple H would have no other choice but to reinstate Brock Lesnar to try and uh, take care of Seth Rollins once and for all at SummerSlam. Seems like a practical way to advance that whole storyline. Don't know if it's going to happen or not, but... Uh, I, uh, I, I think there's a decent chance of something similar to that at least happening. All right, this one comes from The Heel Player. Okay, Aaron, what the hell did I just watch on Raw? I knew it was going to be bad once the Authority started the show. I had to figure out how it was going to be bad. Also, Dean getting arrested was just stupid and lame. Your thoughts on the show? I thought it was an okay Raw. I didn't think it was a really good show. It was your fairly standard Raw with the promo at the beginning and the storyline where Dean Ambrose gets arrested uh, by the NYPD, even though it was in Nassau and it's not in their jurisdiction. Uh, that was a huge logic hole. Tons of people uh, pointed that out to me. Um, 
You know, it is what it is. It's just your typical WWE storyline where a guy gets arrested. It's very over the top, and then he comes back out at the end. I was pissed off because the sirens started um, playing, and I thought that Scott Steiner was going to come out. I mean, really, I didn't, but, you know, it, it, it just uh, it annoys me because one of these days I want to hear the sirens and actually see Scott Steiner come out. Uh, why does WWE have to tease me with that? Uh, but, yeah, Dean Ambrose came out with the ambulance and uh, – Maybe this means we're going to get an ambulance match at some point. I don't know. I mean, I, I seem to remember him doing this. Or I think it was Ryback, actually. Somebody came out with the sirens and uh, did the ambulance gimmick for an ambulance match. It might have been Ryback. Um, so, yeah, it, it was a bit goofy and over the top. But um, it's just WWE's way of filling time to build up to the Elimination Chamber. And um, I, I wish there was a little bit more creativity. But I, I'm not, like terribly offended by it i just feel like it's uh you know another segment whatever and just move on to the pay-per-view all right this one comes from kane yo yo for the win hey Aaron, what did you think of the rusev and lana segment i probably enjoyed it more than a male viewer should have your thoughts thanks well i actually thought that this was the best thing about raw the interaction between rusev and lana and yes it is very similar to the Mark Merrow Sable storyline from almost two decades ago now. But um, I, I think that Rusev did a really good job. Lana did a great job. And I'm very curious about what's going to happen here because I talked about this in um, the Elimination Chamber predictions video with Jeff. Um, it sure seems to me like there's going to be a swerve. Um, I mean, Lana uh, just kissing Dolph Ziggler and getting really close with him. Uh, the whole thing feels like a setup. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. I don't know if that's the case, but that that's at least how it feel, feels to me as a viewer. Um, I suppose you could have a swerve and have Rusev and Lana get back together for a couple more months, uh, but at, at some point I'm expecting Lana to make a full break from Rusev and probably ditch the whole Russian uh, gimmick with the suit and just be a full-fledged WWE diva. That, that's what I'm expecting to happen anyways. Uh, but I, I could see a swerve happening. I mean, I, I sent something like that, you know. Uh, and same thing with Dean Ambrose. The fact that him and Roman Reigns are so buddy-buddy, um, it, it feels like something's going to happen. Now, we're probably not going to get two swerves on one pay-per-view. So either uh, Lana sides with Rusev or uh, Reigns turns on Ambrose. One of those things, I think, uh, there's a decent chance of happening. Uh, but there's always a possibility of both. Who knows? All right, moving on here. Got this question from CPW1978. Aaron, do you think Barry Horowitz deserves a Hall of Fame induction or other gimmick acts like Brooklyn Brawler, Bad News Brown, Bam Bam, Earthquake, and Doink? Where is the love for the jobbers? Is this a serious question? Uh, the WWE Hall of Fame is already watered down enough as it is. I mean, I guess since it's been watered down so badly, you could have a, a jobber Hall of Fame. Uh, but, I mean, really, I mean, if, if the Hall of Fame has any shred of credibility at this point, this would be a terrible idea. I would not do this um, at best if you want to honor these guys as a joke. Uh, the Slammies is already a joke, has no credibility. So have a Slammy for, uh, you know, the, the Jobber Award or something as a Slammy, and you can give that to Barry Horowitz. But doing the Hall of Fame, I mean, come on now. that That's, that's just a terrible idea, no offense. Moving on here, got this one from The Other Z. Hey Aaron, do you find Kevin Owens stomping on the U.S. title again is not only in bad taste for Memorial Day, but plain out repetitive to do it two weeks in a row? I know they want to build him as, a, as an amazing heel, but I think once on a U.S. holiday is enough. Well, I'm not really offended by him stomping on the title on Memorial Day, but I, I can definitely see some people out there being offended by it. Um, once again, the people that are out there talking about how the Attitude Era should be brought back, anytime WWE does something even remotely controversial, you get all these people complaining about it. So I, I don't get what the deal is with that. Um... But the one thing I will say that I agree with about this this question here is uh, the fact that you're doing the same exact angle two weeks in a row. Two weeks in a row, Kevin Owens lays out John Cena. To me, that makes the finish for Elimination Chamber all that more obvious. Uh, Kevin Owens getting the best of John Cena twice. 
Uh, don't see it happening again on the pay-per-view, uh, based off of what happened on television. Um, yeah, I would have liked to have seen WWE do a different angle to build up the match, um, but once again, it's a pay-per-view that has two weeks of build, something that was put together at the last minute, and uh, I guess they just figured to shoot the same angle twice. Whatever. All right, next question here from Sexual Vanilla 28 Interesting username. Hey, Aaron, have watched no dq &A videos since the 300s, so obviously I'm a long-time viewer. You've been watching it since the year 300? Oh, I guess you mean the number of episodes. But first-time asker. Say Daniel Bryan is healthy enough to return and works part-time. Do you believe he is a big enough draw for crowds to be behind him? Please answer in video. Well, my gut feeling on Daniel Bryan and his health is if he is able to come back, he's going to want to come back full-time. I don't think he's going to want to come back and do a part-time schedule. But, you know, he's either going to be healthy to be able to go full-time or he's not going to be healthy to work at all. That That's the way I see it with Daniel Bryan. You know, it's not, it's a different uh, situation from somebody like a Chris Jericho. You know, Jericho is in great health. He can do a full-time schedule, but he chooses not to. Uh, with Daniel Bryan, you know, he's either going to be healthy or he's not going to be healthy. Um, now, let's just say for argument's sake that he was healthy and wanted to work a part-time schedule. Um, I could definitely see him getting away with it. I mean, WWE has been more open to guys coming in for part-time schedules. You look at Brock Lesnar, Chris Jericho, The Rock, and so on. Um, I could definitely see Daniel Bryan. I mean, he, he's certainly a big enough star where I think WWE should should uh, make that offer to him if that's something he wants to do. But my, once again, my feeling is if Daniel Bryan can come back, he's going to go all the way and be a full-time superstar. All right, last question here today from DJ Birdie Booster. Hey, Aaron, I know it's a long shot, but could, could you see Kevin Owens winning this Sunday from referee stoppage? Let Owens go on a mean streak and kick the crap out of Cena without Cena having to take the fall and keep the title in the process. Thanks. Well, going back to earlier, if, if Owens had not gotten the best of John Cena two weeks in a row, then I would have said that this is a possibility. That's definitely a way you can have John Cena lose um, without having to be pinned or made to submit. And, um, you know, when the title is not on the line, you can do something like that. But I, I, I definitely feel it is a long shot at this point. I just don't think Kevin Owens is going to win on Sunday. Should he beat John Cena? I mean, if it was my call, um, I would probably have him win the title because Kevin Owens uh, can really benefit from beating John Cena and he's not an underdog character like Neville or Sami Zayn. He's a character that is over based on his dominance. You know, he's a top heel. He's a monster heel. Um, he needs to look really strong in the match with John Cena. Um, if anything, uh, one possibility I could see playing out is a no contest where both guys either get double counted out or there's a double DQ where the match just gets thrown out. That, I actually think there's a decent possibility of that happening at Elimination Chamber or John Cena just flats out beat Kevin Owens. That's what I think is going to happen. So that'll do it for this edition of No DQ and a Video. Elimination Chamber is this Sunday, live on the WWE Network for just $9.99. But if you enjoy NoDQ.com, you can continue watching the videos on the No DQ channel for $0.00. And, zero cents. and of course, stay tuned to NoDQ.com for the latest news, rumors, and live results coverage of Elimination Chamber. And I will see you guys next time.